Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before going to today's broadcast, as our custom is on this daily broadcast, can we make requests to our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in releasing your faith now. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are talking about the knowledge of the wisdom of God's word. And, and this week we're looking at how God wants us to know him. And God says in Jeremiah, anyone who's going to glory should glory in this, that he understands and knows me. That I am a God who exercises, exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. I exercise loving kindness, righteousness, and judgment in the earth. Now, I'm going to show you something. Now, why am I sharing this with you? So that you will know how to relate with God. And two, you will know the character of God. And, and, and when you find yourself in situations, you will know what God would, would expect of you. Because God wants to see himself in us. That's the whole essence of why he made man. He wants to, when he says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, he wants to see you act the way he would act. Yes. I told you, yes, that's why God loved David so much. He said, this one is after my heart. <laughs> it's God. <laughs> now then, I'll show you something in Genesis. Let's go to the very beginning hello bed do fratida has ku shoot can ten a club brother dish keta genesis chapter four now the background of this story is when cain had brought a sacrifice cain and abel brought sacrifice to to god god accepted abel's sacrifice and didn't accept cain and so Cain wasn't happy. Now, let, let's just start from verse 6. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. What's God saying to Cain? He says, hey, I think I was sharing, okay, that was in, that was in our fellowship meeting. And, and you can find this message on YouTube also. Just go to our channel, uh, our page or our channel on YouTube. I told you there are lots of materials there that will help you grow. If you are diligent and you're really concerned about your growth, go to our channel, subscribe for it so that when, every time we drop a new message, um, you would pick it up, you will see it and listen to it and just be blessed. Praise God. Now, so um, God had, God didn't reject Cain's offering because of the quality of the offering. God rejected Cain's offering because of the personality of Cain. Yes, Cain would not obey God. Cain wouldn't follow God's way, yet he's bringing an offering. And God says, if you have done well, if you have done right, wouldn't you he didn't say, wouldn't eat have been accepted? Now, the problem with Cain's um, frowning was that God did not accept his sacrifice. And God says, if you had done well, wouldn't you have been accepted? But then you have not done well. So the problem is the sin is still lying at the door. And its desire is to have you. Sin there was actually Satan. See, Satan is at the door. He's still trying to get you. And his desire is to destroy you. But then I expect you to rule over him. Okay? So, now then. Verse 9. Then the Lord said to Cain, 
Now this is after he had killed his brother Abel. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said as God now, what have you done? The voice of your brother cries unto me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hands. Okay. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I, have, I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it shall happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. Now, God just told Cain, based on what he's done, he's killed Abel. Now, the ground has swallowed blood, human blood, from the hands of Cain. And the ground knows this. Now, actually, truth be told, God wasn't cursing Cain here. He didn't curse Cain. God was telling Cain the result of his action. So, God is saying, now, because the ground has opened its mouth to swallow your brother's blood, you're going to have a problem with the ground. What problem is you going to have with the ground? If you till the ground, it will not yield to you. It's, it, the ground will cause you to be a vagabond because you cannot settle in any place. Okay, now. And then Cain began to complain to God, said, okay, yeah, I've heard everything. He said, but my punishment is great. So it just simply sees me now because I'm going to be a vagabond roaming everywhere. Anybody who sees me now, they'll just want to kill me. God says, no, guess what God said. And the Lord said to Cain, Whoso, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold this guy just killed his brother and god is placing uh, god is placing a judgment on anyone who, who will kill cain you want to think but god why are you even allowing him talk this guy just killed his innocent brother so he is not innocent anybody who finds him and kills him actually is supposed to be doing god's service but here is god saying that no Anybody who kills Cain, that person will receive sevenfold punishment. See, I don't understand. Abel is gone. Here is God. Even giving Cain opportunity to speak. Now, what's going on? God was only being himself, exercising loving kindness towards Cain. Now, look at what God said. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. <laughs> now, you be a judge in this matter. You be on God's side with God, beside God, I mean. And, and, and you, you, you are hearing Cain talk like this. What would you counsel God? What would you tell him? He's even having mouth to speak. How silly. You're even lucky you're still alive. The ground should have opened up and swallowed your life. If it's me. You know what I'm talking about? Praise God. But here is God. Even in Cain's situation. As though God suddenly forgot Abel. He's looking out for Cain and seeing how he can help Cain. What's that? Exercising loving kindness you remember the story of king ahab now king ahab had seen this vineyard beside his palace belonging to a young man called Naboth. so ahab sent for Naboth. went actually went to him and said Naboth, this your vineyard is so nice and it's just beside the palace yeah, yeah, my great-grandfather gave it to my father. My father gave it to... He said, okay, um, would you mind? I want to buy it off you. Ah, no. Okay, okay, let's do it this way. Can you choose any other place in the land? I'll give it to you in exchange for your vine. Or just name your price. Neighbor said, no, no way. I'm not selling. And the king's countenance was down. And Jezebel, who we all know was a wicked woman, came back home and saw her husband 
His countenance was not so good. So what's the matter? What's the matter? I don't know. Imagine his servant say, Adam, we don't know. He just had a meeting with one, that, that guy, our neighbor in the palace, neighbors. And he came back feeling very sad. Oh, really? Why? So she went to her husband. What's the matter? Is this not this neighbor? He wouldn't sell his vineyard. In fact, I even offered him. He said, eh? Okay. Arranged for neighbor to be killed. And this innocent man was killed. And after he was killed, God went to the prophet Elijah and told him, go and tell Ahab. I'm going to deal with him the same way he has killed Naboth. I'm going. God didn't say go and tell Jezebel. He said go and tell Ahab. Because you see, the origin of this scene was Ahab. Are you getting it now? It was because of Ahab, Jezebel killed Naboth. If the king hadn't desired the vineyard, Naboth would have been free from that whole situation. But because the king desired vineyard, Jezebel killed Naboth and so that the king would possess the vineyard. And even after she killed him, she came to her husband and said, Arise, go and carry your vineyard. It's all yours. She didn't ask him what happened. They were you able to convince him to sell? She, he didn't ask. He just went to, to possess the vineyard. He must have known in some way that he died. But you see, because of the, the way he died, it, they made it look as though he died for his own sins. But the king should have had enough wisdom to understand the workings of his wife. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, now, after he died, the king too went and possessed the vineyard. So God sent Elijah while he was there. Elijah came and said, oh, this is going to happen to you. This is going to happen to you. This is going to happen to you. Now, remember, the thought of killing Nabal didn't come from the heart of the king. But then he is enjoying the proceed of the guy's mother. So, Elijah came and spoke to him and told him all the judgment that God has lashed out for him. And this guy suddenly went down and said, Oh God, I'm so sorry. It's not me. It's not me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I like, hey, guess what? God sent the prophet back. God went to him and says, You see how he has humbled himself before me? Go and tell him that I will not bring that punishment on him again. I will bring it on his children. Now, what's that? That was God exercising loving kindness. Even to a man that have just murdered. Look at Cain's situation. Look at Naboth's situation. And Ahab. Was God being partial? God was only exercising loving kindness to the living because he cannot exercise loving kindness to the dead. That's why I tell people, I said, no matter what, don't let yourself die. Is it something, eh, eh, if you kill me, know that you have killed an innocent person. If you let them kill you, you will be dead and they will still receive mercy from God. How can they will? If they turn to the Lord, God will show them mercy because God's nature is love. Look at David's situation. David, you know the story of David and Bathsheba. I want you to think. I'm bringing all these facts to you to point to one thing about the character of God. So you don't fall into that enemy's trap of thinking that God will bring out punishment and vengeance. David fell in love with Bathsheba while she was married. And you know the story, she got pregnant and David tried to pin the pregnancy on her husband, but he would refuse. So David plotted the death of the husband and that plot succeeded. The husband died. Okay. And then the prophet came and said, hey, David, you have sinned. That's all the story he was giving. You have sinned. This is what you have done. And David said, ah, truly, he, he admitted. 
And remember, he's the king. He could have said, Prophet, who, who born you? Who dare? How dare you come tell me I've sinned? Do you know? Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened between us? Do you know? No, no, no. He says, yes. I have sinned. I have done wrong. I've killed the man. I've taken his wife. Okay. So he repented. Uriah is gone. David repented. His repentance, I call it Barakashubrede. His repentance did not include telling Bathsheba to go away. Neither did, Nabot, uh, neither did Ahab return the vineyard of Nabot. He could have looked for another family member and said, Oh, your brother died because of this vineyard. Come and take it. Oh, I don't want it again. Yet God showed him mercy. God showed him mercy. What about David? He repented. He did not return the woman. To who now? No husband anymore. But David decided. You know what? It's my problem. It's our problem. I'll stand by you. He married her properly now. You know the story? That child died. Actually, God didn't let that child leave. The child died. But guess how far the mercy of God went for David. Bathsheba became the woman that gave birth to the both parents of Jesus, Joseph and Mary. How much kind or what kind of coincidence can that be? That the man and woman who fathered or who brought forth Jesus. The both of them were traced, not to Adam, they were both traced to the womb of this woman who you should think the hand of God's judgment should be on her life. What do you think that is? God exercising loving kindness. Be careful how you judge things. Be careful how you condemn people. You remember Jesus. I'm bringing all this to you to show you how God thinks. They brought the woman caught in the act of adultery. We caught this woman in the act of adultery. And according to the law, we should stone her to death. Jesus was within his right to say to them, well, keep the law. It's your job. You're the law keepers. My hand is not in this. Neither did Jesus say, you guys are lying. She was not caught in the act of adultery. She, she, you guys are lying against her. No? And by the wisdom of God, he freed that woman from their hands. And they all left. And he turns to her and says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. What's that? Exercising. So when they brought the woman to Jesus, holy Jesus, holy Jesus, today they bring a matter to you. A woman was caught, a married woman was caught committing adultery with another man. They bring that matter to you. How are you going to judge it? You say, all oh, these women cannot stay in your husband's house. What is it that you're looking for? Jesus, first of all, says, he first of all freed her from her accusers. And after doing that, he says, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Exercise. So that woman lives there with an assurance she's got a life. Because they were within their right to just take her out of the city and stone her to death. But for some reason, they tried, they decided to use her to tempt Jesus. And what did they get? One who's going to exercise loving kindness. 
If we know God, then we must act like Him. My time is up today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We desire to know you, Lord. Not just know you for knowledge's sake. Know you to be like you. Know you to act and live in this earth like you. Fill our hearts more and more with your truth, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.